In this video, we're going to walk through a very simple C++ program to get orientated with how C++ programs are structured and some of the interesting ideas related to C++ operations and namespaces. So the goal of our program is going to be just to output a simple hello world onto the screen as we often do with a first programming language. And you'll see that the way that C++ does this is going to differ a fair bit from most programming languages that you see. So let's talk through this process. The very first thing, which is pretty standard in any sort of programming language, is that we need to import the library that contains our function for printing stuff onto the screen. That is included in a library called iostream. And the way that we import this is using the pound sign include keyword. So we do pound sign include, and then inside of these triangular brackets, we put the name of the library we want to import, in this case, iostream. So that will give us access to all of our printing and IO input output type functions that we need. Now, inside of C++, we typically have a main function, which is typically defined as an int main. It may or may not have arguments. For now, we're going to exclude the arguments from it. The int return type is typically the status or exit code of the program. So when the program ends, we can return back an integer, which represents how the program exited. Did it exit successfully? Did it have some sort of errors? That's the idea of that int return that we have available. Now to actually print out something onto the screen, we need to use a function called cout, like this. Now we do something really interesting with this CO. We put in front of it a STD and then two colons like this. What this is really doing is everything in front of the two colons is what's referred to as a namespace. You can think of a namespace like a container for functions, variables, and other user-defined data types. What we're saying is we're saying go to that standard namespace and retrieve for us the function from it called CO. This is really just a way of organizing our code. You know, if you had like 10 different kinds of C out, you know, maybe there's one that prints out to the terminal, maybe there's one that prints out to files. We wanna be able to select the right one, right? And this is the way that we do this. We do this using these namespaces. So we say, okay, from standard, select the C out function. Now, how do we print something to our C out? Well, we use the puts onto operator, which is these two triangle uh, braces right here. What we do is we put on the right hand side what we want to put onto cout. So in this case, I want to put the text hello world onto cout. What that really means is that we're just going to send that data over to the cout function. The cout function is then going to take that and it's going to output it. It's going to print it onto the screen, in this case, in the terminal. And that's really how our cout is going to work. So this is really the simple structure that we need in order for this to work. We end this line with a semicolon. And I'll show you here, if we go ahead and compile this, you know, using something like G++ is a good compiler for this. If I compile together my file, which I called, uh, what did I call the file? I called it main.cpp, and I'll output it as main. When I run that binary that results from it, you'll see that I do indeed get hello world printed to the screen. So it looks like everything is working successfully. So the main things that are really interesting here is, of course, the namespaces and the way that we're actually sending data over to our cout. Now, what's interesting about this cout is that it gives us a, a sort of advantage in the fact that we can actually send multiple things over to our output. So after Hello World, I could print something else. I can print, this is a C++ program, for instance. And what will happen is it will send over the first line, and then once it's done with that, it will send over this second line. So you see, we can kind of chain these together to send multiple sets of data over to cout. So that's a fun little thing that we can do with this. And you'll see here that it does work that exact way. The first one gets sent over, and then the second one gets sent over. So we have this ability to chain these together, which is a nice sort of plus to this. Whereas if we were working in a language like C, where we have like maybe a printf or something like that, we would have to do two printf calls to get this kind of output, or we could you know put it all in one line of one argument. But generally, you know, this allows us to sort of get it all in one place like this. Now, there's one other thing that I want to note here, and it's something that's a common, you know, thing that we see in tutorials that, you know, you'll see sometimes used, and I want to discuss a little bit about it, and it's the idea of namespaces. So you'll see here that I put this standard colon colon C out, right? What I said was that this was a way of being able to go to that standard container or namespace and retrieve the C out function. There's another way that we can do this. We can actually remove this, and we can set what's called a namespace for our program. We could say using namespace std like this. And what this will do is for this whole file, it will use the namespace std, your standard, for 
all of these functions that we reference. So with the cout, I don't need to put in this. It will automatically put it in for me because I've set it to use the namespace std. Now this has the advantage of, of course, reducing down the amount of code that we're writing, but there is disadvantages to this. And the main disadvantage is that if I want to use, you know, a cout from a different namespace, we could have conflicts between them if I just write cout, right? So if I just write cout, it's not clear which namespace I'm really getting it from, which is going to potentially cause some problems. And you'll see later on in like header files, if we were to put this into a header file, it would actually force this on anything that imports that header, which would make things really complicated and annoying to work with if we were trying to use different namespaces. So generally what's recommended is that we always set the namespace like this. I just wanted to bring this up because in a lot of tutorials, you'll see that using namespace type syntax, and generally it's not really recommended. This is the main way that we would typically do it. So with this, you now have the structure of a very basic C++ program. Now, one final thing that I should note here is I said that this returns an integer. We could simply put in the return just by adding return and then the integer value, just like this, right? So that's the way that we can actually get a return out of this code. So that, that's just one other detail that we can add. So with this, you now have the basic idea of writing a C++ program. We'll continue to dive into C++ and explore a lot more of the features and functionality. There is a lot of it available in C++, so we'll be able to explore a lot of interesting and exciting things. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.